Jadual harian Hana selalu sibuk. Ha? Jadi, saya kekal sihat dengan Vidasi. Dengan vitamin C yang cukup setiap hari. Tiada apa pun yang boleh menghalangi saya. Minumlah Vidasi. Perlindungan sistem imun anda. Good evening, I'm Putri Inara and you're watching Kini News. The government is set to introduce stiffer penalties for individuals who violate COVID-19 health SOPs. From March 11th, the fine for individuals violating the law will be raised tenfold to 10,000 ringgit. Individuals who violate movement control order restrictions will face stiffer penalties beginning March 11th under emergency amendments to the legislation meant to curb the spread of COVID-19. The amendments to the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988 or Act 342 was gazetted yesterday. Among others, the compound for offences under the Act was raised from 1,000 to 10,000 ringgit for individuals. Companies or corporations that violate the SOPs can be fined up to 50,000 ringgit. Amendments were also made to general penalties which states that any person who commits an offence under the Act for which no penalty is expressly provided may be fined up to 100,000 ringgit or imprisoned for up to 7 years. Currently, a person convicted under Act 342 would be liable for up to 2 years imprisonment or a fine or both upon the first conviction. Subsequent offences would attract a jail term of up to 5 years, a fine or both. The amendments also state that it is illegal to remove or tamper with tracing devices, such as wristbands worn by those who have been infected with COVID-19 or are undergoing quarantine. Other examples of offences under Act 342 include failing to heed the Health Ministry Director General's directions to take measures for preventing the spread of infectious disease or knowingly exposing other people to an infectious disease. Meanwhile, several people have raised their concerns over the government's decision to increase the fine. Double standards and inconsistent SOPs were cited as problems against it. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Raza has called on the government to review their decision to increase the fine imposed on individuals who violate COVID-19 health SOPs to 10,000 ringgit. He said he supported heavier punishments to be imposed on those who violate the SOPs, but this depended on the severity of the violation, as not all SOPs are equal. He suggested the fine be increased progressively, saying that the SOPs introduced by the government were also inconsistent. He said for people who committed less serious offences by mistake, the punishment should be to educate them and not to bankrupt them. And a method of progressive punishment should be adopted, with the fine rate increased from 1,000 to 10,000 ringgit in stages for repeated violations. According to Najib, this was adopted by several other countries and accepted by the people there because no one will sympathise with stubborn offenders who repeatedly violate SOPs. Najib also stressed that the SOPs introduced by the government should be consistent if the penalties to be imposed were heavy. He added that the people's anger will increase if there is another double standard between the punishment of ordinary people and the politicians. Meanwhile, the AP has also voiced their objection to the increase in the fine for violators. In a statement today, the AP Secretary General Lim Guan Eng said that a harsh increase in penalties will not help to curb the rise in number of infections when there is double standard in the enforcement of laws. He said only the lower income groups and ordinary rakyat will bear the brunt of stiffer penalties. It was recently announced that beginning March 11th, people who violate movement control order restrictions can expect stiffer penalties under emergency amendments to the legislation meant to curb the spread of COVID-19. A video has gone viral showing police firing at the tyres of a car in Sungabulu today after it rammed into other vehicles stopped at a traffic light in an attempt to flee the scene. A video of a motorist ramming into other vehicles at a traffic light after being confronted by police has gone viral. In the video, a police officer can be seen trying to open the door to a proton waja which was behind two other vehicles at a traffic light. The driver of the waja ignored the officer and rammed into a lorry in front of it in an attempt to get away. The officer avoided the car as it reversed and rammed into two vehicles in front of it a couple of times. He later fired multiple rounds at the car's tires, but the driver managed to break through the two vehicles and escape. According to reports, the incident occurred at the Sierra Mas traffic light in Sungai Bulo at around 12.50pm today.
Haryan Metro reported that the vehicle was later found abandoned near the Damansara Damai MRT. The two suspects in the vehicle had escaped on foot. AMNO Youth Chief Ashraf Wajdi Duzuki's claim that the Pakatan Harapan government had glorified communists in the Form for History textbook has earned him a letter of demand from former Education Minister Masli Malik. Former Education Minister Masli Malik has sent a letter of demand to AMNO Youth Chief Ashraf Wajdi Duzuki over the latter's claims that the Pakatan Harapan government had glorified communists in the Form for History textbook. Masli demanded that Ashraf issue an open apology and pay compensation for the slander. This came after the Education Ministry clarified yesterday that the changes in the textbooks were made in April 2018, when Malaysia was still under the UMNO BN rule. The Education Ministry said the textbook was researched, reviewed and certified by its History and Textbook Curriculum Expert Panel. The panel comprised seven history experts from different fields and racial backgrounds. In a Facebook post today, Masli said, the evil, slanderous political culture needs to stop because it doesn't benefit the people. He said politicians need to focus on helping the people and adopting a culture of service, not finding fault, accusing and slandering as they wish. He added that Malaysians are fed up and don't like this kind of political culture which can damage racial unity in this country. On Wednesday, Ashraf had criticised Harapan over two pages in the history textbook on the role played by radical Malay leftist leaders in fighting for independence and the Malayan People's Anti-Japanese Armies MPAJA, battle against the Japanese occupation. AMNO Supreme Council member Muhammad Puat Zarkashi has told Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin that his party will ditch Perikatan National in the next general election. AMNO Supreme Council member Muhammad Puat Zarkashi said that it was an open secret that AMNO will leave Perikatan National. In an interview with the Malaysian Insight, he said, this is as 118 out of 147 divisions have already decided on it. His statement came amid speculation that Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin had issued an ultimatum for AMNO to decide by March 1st if it wanted to contest the next polls as part of PN. Puat said that Mohidin should understand that the decision has already been made and it was just not official yet. He added that most of AMNO's divisions had rejected cooperation with Bersatu during their respective annual general meetings last month, and the AMNO Supreme Council had decided to leave the final decision to the AMNO General Assembly. However, due to the emergency, the party had to postpone the General Assembly, which was scheduled on January 31st to March 27th. Puat also admitted that there was opposition in the AMNO Supreme Council as to whether it should cut ties with Pesatu for GE15. With Anwar Musa among those who do not want AMNO to break ties with PN. However, he said, AMNO is bound to die a slow death if it continues to be with PN, which is politically dishonest and will stab them in the back. And Anwar has to accept that in democracy, the majority decision has to be accepted. He said AMNO may not go solo in the upcoming general election as they can still work with PAS or GPS and other parties in Sabah. Senior Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob was the latest cabinet member to receive the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. Senior Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob received his first dose of the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine at the Tunku Mizan Army Hospital in Wangsa Maju today. Ismail is the latest cabinet member to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Deputy Defence Minister Iqmal Hisham Abdul Aziz and Malaysian Armed Forces Chief General Effendi Buang were also among those that received the vaccine with him. In a press conference after receiving the vaccine, Ismail said that armed forces personnel involved in operations and foreign missions will be the first group among the personnel to receive the vaccine. He said this will include those involved in Ops Benteng as they are safeguarding the country's borders and waters. He added that the first phase of the vaccination drive would also target MAF officers and personnel involved in operating the country's strategic defense assets, including fighter jets, transport aircraft, naval vessels and helicopters. Previously, Ismail had said that a total of 42,120 members of the Malaysian Armed Forces nationwide will receive the COVID-19 vaccine injections in the first phase of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you like what we do, support the channel by subscribing and clicking on the bell icon so you'll never miss any news again. Once again, I'm Putri Inara. Thank you and good night.